Hello folks, welcome to another episode of that Gang Stalking Show. My name is Doug, I'm a TI and I've been one since 2004. I just turned my air conditioner on in my apartment and I need to turn it off. This segment is going to be about another movie I saw. Um, the movie is called The Lives of Others. I highly recommend you guys to see this movie. I saw it on Amazon Prime. It could probably be seen on any other platform. Just look it up, The Lives of Others. It's about the Stasi, the secret German police that, uh, you know, came up with the gang stalking tactics that are being used on us and everybody worldwide. Um, this, the Stasi came into power in 1950 and they ended in 1989. They spied, I think, I think what the statistic is, is one, one, is one out of every three people in Germany, in Eastern Germany, was being, was under surveillance at one time or another. This movie does not get into the gang stalking tactics that, that you and I know about, but it does go into detail about the surveillance placed on, on other people. They watch people in their most intimate of moments, and they document as such. Uh, the The movie is is spoken in German, but it does have English subtitles, and the um, you know it doesn't go so fast that you can't read the subtitles quick enough. Every you understand everything. There is nothing that is lost in translation. It is a really good movie, and I really encourage you, if you're a targeted individual, to watch this movie. If you're the loved one of a targeted individual, or you're someone who's just watching this channel, trying to wrap your head around this whole gang-stalking nonsense, please watch this movie. Um, I see so much, all the time, people posting on YouTube, on the internet, about it's about our RH blood factor. It's about shape shifting the aliens and reptilians and the hive mind. It's about psychological torture. It's what it's really about. Surveillance, covert, overt. It's about psychological uh, torture. And you'll see some, some of the psychological torture talked about. Uh, maybe one or two one or two techniques are, are, are shown in this movie, but it doesn't get into the broad depth and detail of what we experience every day when, when we're enduring a campaign of this torture. You will see how they pit family member against family member, lover against lover, friend against friend. I know it is so hard for us to wrap our heads around, why did my family member turn on me? Why are my friends acting so weird? Why are the people at work doing this. But you've got to understand that the people who are behind all this in Stasi Germany, they had their grip on everybody. Everybody feared them. Everybody knew that the Stasi was real. Unlike in America and around the world, very few people believe gang stalking is real. And when you try to say, well, the Stasi, and they'll go, well, who's the Stasi? What difference does the Stasi make? Well, it makes a lot of difference because had it not been for the Stasi, there would be no gang stalking as we know it. Psychiatrists and psychologists, behavioralists, clinicians, doctors, anybody you could think of in post-World War II Nazi Germany, when they became a socialistic um, you know, uh, society, they had to keep dissidents and whistleblowers and complainers, they had to keep their mouth shut. They wanted socialism to, to, to flourish so badly that any outspoken uh, person who talked bad about socialism, they had to be placed under surveillance and, it, and if necessary, thrown into a prison. Um, I don't know why we are experiencing gang stalking in the United States. I, I've got several theories, which I'm not willing to discuss at the, at the moment, but I cannot figure out a reason why it's being used here. I understand places like Cuba, 
the former Soviet Union and, and uh, East Berlin, I mean not East Berlin, but East Germany, these are places where you had to keep your foot on the throat of everybody to keep anybody from rising up and destroying your socialism. Like socialism was going to be a great thing and it never was a great thing and it never has been a great thing and it never will be a great thing. But they used the Stasi to allow socialism to propagate and to flourish. Um, once again, when you watch this movie, um, there's not going to be a lot of gang stalking tactics or the uh, uh, um, psychological operations, but you will see operations, um, you know, um, going on in this movie. Um, uh, there's always a, a scene where a guy is sitting down, he's got his headphones on, he's listening to somebody's house that is bugged, or they will go into someone's house that they plan on bugging, or they, they will go into someone's house, and you'll see something like this. Let's say um, this is a... Not all this is... I, I didn't prepare for this, but let's just say that my top of my bookshelf is always like this. It's always like this. They go in and they do stuff like this. Move things around so that when I come home, I'd go, my car wasn't there. It was here. And this car was there. And this was like this. It does that in the movie. Dr. John Hall's book talk, talks about that. I've seen several videos especially the ones on targeted individuals in San Antonio, Texas, talk about they break into my house and they take everything apart. They don't steal money. They took my safe apart. It had valuables in it, but they didn't steal anything. That came from the Stasi secret police. That's where all of that came from. I will say this. I am still not really, really knowledgeable about the Stasi, but I am more knowledgeable now than I was a couple weeks ago. They are, they, they're psychologists, they're psychiatrists, uh, behavioralists, uh, clinicians, whoever, they all sat down and engineered this psychological torture to keep people in their place. And it kept people in their place because it was awful. It was just it was just horrible. And it shows this in this movie. You get that sense of grief just hanging over everybody that knows about the Stasi police. I just I don't want to get the plot away, but I want to tell you, you're not going to see a lot of psychological operations, but you're going to see manipulations. You're going to see how a neighbor will agree to spy on another neighbor or not say anything that they're that they have that they have knowledge about. Um, family member, lover turning on lover. You know, I don't know that I have really been had my 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 family or my close friends destroyed relationship wise. I don't know that. There's sometimes I think, well, maybe, but then I don't always have enough proof. So I I just don't want to go down that road of going. Oh man, they turned on me. They turned on me. But I will say this. There were people that I went to high school with that, like in one case, uh, there was this one lady that that she was she was a senior when I was a junior. I ran into her again when, after I graduated nursing school in 1997. We talked. She was an RN. She was making a lot of money. She was going out to California every weekend. They were uh, picking her up and flying her out to California because of the nurse strike. And then Monday through Friday, she worked around Dallas as a nurse. And then she got flew out on the weekends and worked two doubles and they paid for everything. So she made a lot of money back then. And in 2007, I believe it was, or 2000, no, it was 2008. I ran into her again. This time she was, uh, she was a director of nurses at a nursing home. She was happy and thrilled to have me there. Um, I got hired and for two weeks it was outstanding. Uh, I, hey, what's up? I'm not going to say her name. Uh, she's since passed on, but I came into work one day, and this is a light-skinned lady. I mean, I'm talking, she's very fair-skinned. Her face was like beet red like this. And I'm walking in with my backpack, and I'm getting ready to clock in, and, and she just looks at me, and she goes, what do you think you're doing? I go, I'm getting ready to come on and do it. She goes, you don't work here anymore. And she was mad, and she was fuming. 
and she was cussing and everything else. And I go, what's going on? She goes, you just, you don't work here anymore. She wouldn't give me a reason why. Nobody would give me a reason why. I just turned around and walked out the door. Never been fired in my, a day in my life. Every job I've ever had, I've always gotten promotions. I always get commendations, uh, letters of recommendation, the whole nine yards until this targeting thing started. But she was one person that they flipped. And I'm pretty sure it was one of those, uh, he's a, pit, a, a pedo type thing, or he is some type of bad person in the handlers or the operatives. And you'll get a good perspective of what a handler is and what an operative is in this movie because the handler and the operatives are all throughout in this movie. You get to see their mindset of how deviant they are. And these people were, were, were able to get to my boss, who was actually somebody I went to high school with, who I had a great relationship with. I played uh, baseball on the same team as, as her brother. Uh, I used to go out to, uh, we call them pasture parties back in, in, in the 80s and go out there and drink beer on her family land, the whole nine yards. And then I show up to work one day and I'm, I am this horrible person that I don't work there anymore. So I know how, I don't know about the family I don't know about close friends, but I do know that this person was flipped. They flipped her against me. With that said, please watch the movie. It is, you, it's, it's, it's imperative. If, if you're going to be a targeted individual, you need to know as much as you can about this program because one of the hardest things that a targeted individual has to, has to be able to do is explain what targeting is. It's very difficult to explain. You just can't go. It's stalking because it's not just stalking. It's a lot of things. And you need to understand it, not from just your perspective, but from the perspective of the people who are treating you like an insect and who are the ones that are sitting down in a chair somewhere on their two to 10 shift with their headphones on and they're listening to you. Or perhaps they're listening to you. I don't know. I think now there are so many targets out there that they really can't listen to everybody. Uh, they only probably listen to the ones uh, who are under an active campaign. It's just my theory. I could be wrong. I don't know. Before I go, I want to show you a website that every single one of you should go to and bookmark. I'm looking at my time. It's called biggerthansnowden.com. One of the biggest things that I have been doing in the past year of my research is finding out who are the credible people in the targeted individual community. Who are the people that know about targeting and who don't say it's delusional? Who are the people that's got all these initials behind their names and go, this is real? Bigger Than Snowden is a website that on its main page it has about 10 or 15 people that, that you need to know about. I'm not going to be able to see what you see because I'm pointing the camera in your direction. You see right there where it says biggerthansnowden.com? That's where you need to go. William Benny, I know about William. He's on our side. John DeCamp, William is an NSA veteran, a technical director. John DeCamp's Army Intelligence Officer, lawyer, and a senator. William J. T Taylor, he's a Marine Corps vet veteran, private investigator. He's on our side. Mary Gregory, U.S. Customs Officer. Jesse Beltrain, paramedic, retired, president of International Center Against Abuse of Covert Technologies. Dr. Colin Ross, one of the few psychiatrists that are on our side. He knows about MK Ultra. Here's another doctor, Dr. Corkin, educator and superintendent. Superintendent, my bad. Cheryl Wash, she's an investigative journalist and a lawyer. Mark Phillips, he's a CIA veteran. Carl Clark, he was with the CIA in the MI5. Karen Stewart, we know about her through Ella. David Voigt, we know about him through Ella. He's a Naval Academy graduate and former Naval officer. Dr. John Hall, this is the guy that introduced all of this to me uh, through his book. He knows about it. Renee Pittman. Human rights advocate and author, Doug Roke, major, retired. Looks like he is a retired U.S. Army officer. He's got a Ph.D. in physics. Dr. Daniel Leibowitz, practicing physician. And it just goes on and on and on. You need to really know who the people are 
who have sense about themselves and who know about this program. Because if you're ever, ever going to, to be in a position to one day to explain this to somebody without them just going, you're, you're delusional, you've got to be able to point to these people and you've got to know who these people are, what their background is, and how, what they have to say about this to validate what you and I have to say. With that said, please go to this website, bookmark it, know who these people are, look them up, and, and study each and every one of them. I mean, I, I strongly encourage you to do that, and, you know, it, it, it'll just broaden your sense, your scope, and your knowledge about this program. With that said, please watch this movie, The Lives of Others. I uh, did a movie review of a different movie last week called Unsane. It's a movie about stalking. If you haven't seen that movie or haven't watched that video I did, it's about stalking. It's an awesome movie. It could be about gang stalking, but it's not. It's another fascinating movie, and the reason I like it so much is the person who this movie is about is about a lady who, when you watch the movie and before she gets sucked into the mental health system, you think she's probably cuckoo. She's not. She's just like you and me. She's got her idiosyncratic behaviors. She's got her weird quirks about her, which we all do, which does not imply at all that we're crazy. All of us have weird things that we do. That's just to be human. But when you're watching this and then she gets sucked into it, you're like, well, yeah, she probably is delusional. But you don't want to leave it there. Keep watching the movie and you go, oh my God. I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it at that. Watch Unsane. I think you can see it for free on some platforms. Uh, the Lives of Others. I think that it may be free on some platforms. I'm not for sure. Just look it, look it up on Google or Vudu or Amazon or whatever you watch your, your movies on. I know I watched one the other day. It was a documentary and I can't remember the name of it. It was free. Uh, I didn't walk away with a lot of knowledge gained from it, but it, it was just another tool in, that, that I learned from. With that said, please watch these movies. Please like, share, and subscribe to these videos. I'm going to be doing a video on the shared delusional disorder um, uh, topic. I, I came across this not too long ago about how um, I read this paper. It's supposed to be a, I, I followed away in the BS paper on gang stalking and delusions. And what it is, Smith College, this is a thesis, dissertations, and projects. This was done in two, 2015. It's called Gang Stalking, Internet con Connectivity as an Emerging Mental Health Concern. Basically, what the abstract says about this, and I'm going to rip this to shreds. It basically says that people who are delusional go to the internet, they find out about gang stalking, and we all collectively share the same delusion. I am going to rip it to shreds, people. I was a target for six long years and suffered everything in the book that depicts gang stalking, and I didn't find out about gang stalking go. That has nothing to do with me. When I found out about gang stalking, I was like, oh my God, that happened to me? I lost my job here. I lost my job there. I lost my job here. People stalked me in public. Noise campaigns, slander campaigns, directed conversations, covert surveillance, overt surveillance, the whole nine yards. I'm going to rip it to shreds. It's going to be my next video. Anyway, you guys have a great um, night. And Happy New Year, everybody. See you guys in 2019. Goodbye.